Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Altrix Inspire here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strache. Rob, one of the things that's so clear about this conference is how important the community is to Altrix. We have 24,000, I mean, sorry, 2,400 attendees here. The room is filled with partners, customers, it, it's, it's a buzz. Yeah, I was going to say the energy has been great and I think also how people are solving their analytics problems with these partners and how much it brings to the table, even when we were talking about with Spark Ed just before and how that really grows the community as part with other partners. Exactly, exactly, and who better to talk about that than our next guest, Sunil Sanan. He is the Global Head of Infosys Data uh, Analytics and AI. Sunil, welcome back to theCUBE, a third time CUBE alumnus. Thank you so much yes, for coming on. Indeed, thank you so much uh, Rebecca and Rob for having me on your show and couldn't wait for our, our conversations today. So as Rob was just saying, I mean, we're really getting down into the nitty gritty about how customers are using um, AI solutions to, to solve their problems. So I'd love you to just talk, maybe even in broad brush strokes, in terms of what you see as, as sort of the, their, the customer's top priorities in terms of what, what they're trying to do and how they're trying to maximize ROI. No, absolutely. Um, so, you know, as you see, what has happened in the industry for the last one year, uh, or one and a half years now, with the um, generative AI coming in, uh, there was a lot of activism on the consumer AI side, because we could all use the democratized AI capabilities, and, and soon the companies realized that this is an opportunity for industry disruption and industry innovation. Uh, if you don't innovate fast enough, you're going to get disrupted, or you have the opportunity to disrupt the industry and take the leadership out there. And I think over the last one year, we are seeing a lot of interest on the enterprise AI side, which you can take advantage of in terms of the, all the innovations that are entering. But one thing that we are also talking to our customers about is that you'll see a lot of these uh, AI models entering the market, you'll see a number of different innovations entering the market, but you have to really make sense of what this means for you as an enterprise. And that's a completely different ball game. And that's where we're seeing our customers now take the uh, step forward in understanding how data ready they are for AI because they've got wealth of information uh, that they've not really thought about how to leverage this because this goes beyond traditional uh, data that they have been governing and managing. Here we are talking about emails and videos and files and all these things that uh, people have in their laptops. Uh, how do you really make sense of all of that and use this for the AI engineer? The other thing that we are seeing is industry disruptions and innovations are getting further fueled with the AI and generative AI. Uh, the companies are rethinking their business models, they're rethinking how to operate uh, their business, how to connect with the customers or serve them better, how do you bring an ecosystem of players around you to find that next opportunity. So the trends are largely pivoted on how you can drive transformation using AI and generative AI. And that's quite a journey that most of our customers are on and we are guiding other companies as well on, on how to drive this. Yeah, I, I think what's great about that is the fact that you, you do an Infosys sees across so many different industries and you're able to then generate best practices. And people can learn from you know, sometimes competitors or co-opetition or even other industries where it's, it's really applicable. Can you kind of give us a little bit of insight into those different industries and how it's really applying AI and analytics at those different industries? Absolutely. Um, there is, there's no industry that has not been touched by AI and generative AI and the possibilities that it drives. Let's take healthcare as an example. We have seen you know, how healthcare industry at large and companies in particular have taken the leap for, forward with digital. When things became remote with pandemic, they had to rethink as to how you can engage and guide your customers, and we saw our customers taking that leap. But now with AI and generative AI, they can power the digital core and transform that into a cognitive core that understands the patient's journeys better. It understands the lifestyle better. Right, and understands their diet, you know, diet and other aspects of their life, which can all be used for understanding what kind of uh, you know, interventions that may be needed for the well-being of the patients. Right? Cost of care can, of course, be pushed down, but the value that you can drive for the patients can really be you know, expedited or, or accelerated with the AI and generative AI. 
our financial services customers are looking at how they can participate in the whole payment ecosystem and drive it with the idea that you can help your consumers' financial needs. Uh, really understand their lifestyle and their life stages to then take that in to see what kind of financial interventions would make sense. Rather than trying to do this at a global basis, now they can highly personalize it to your needs and, and how you know, they can take advantage of all the fintechs that are around them. Our utility industry is going through the entire uh, you know, sustainability and, and green innovation. Right? They want to reduce not only their carbon footprint, but also their customers. And the use of AI and generative AI has opened up so much of opportunities uh, in energy transition, which also helps them understand how the demand patterns have changed. All of us have solar at home. Our, our, you know, we are also the prosumers. You are producing as much as you're consuming. But that changes the demand equation. And it also changes the, the consuming equation because we are consuming with mobile electric vehicles. Now, all of those you know, equations have to be processed to make sure that your demand supply equation is good, your load distributions are managed, vegetation management, which is a huge challenge for the utility players. Uh, you know, in California, for example, we have seen quite a few of them uh, struggle or, yeah. or deal with those challenges. AI generative AI is a huge opportunity for them to be able to do even you know, wildfire management, disaster recovery when the wildfires happen, but also vegetation management that can help them avoid those kind of uh, incidences happening. So I think across industries, there are several of these trends that you know, we are very excited about, and our customers are taking bigger purpose and the objectives with the consumers and society at large in mind to see how to drive this transformation. You've painted such a vivid portrait of the, of the exciting opportunities that are emerging in different industries from financial services to sustainability and green enterprises. I, these guys like the tech, but I like to talk about teamwork and collaboration. So I'm, I'd love you to talk a little bit about how you work with Alteryx um, as partners to, make, to help your customers grow even more and, and where you see as sort of the next, next opportunities for your partnership. Yeah, um, for Infosys, we have taken the pivot of business outcomes because unless there is business value delivered, all of what we say from a technology perspective, architecture perspective is not going to really make sense. So we take a pivot of business outcomes, which means anything that we do on data analytics and AI need to reach business to uh, you know, gain efficiencies from their processes using these technologies or to drive newer processes, reimagine business processes you know, through which they run their operations or, or engage with their customers and, and so many other uh, things around product R&D, et cetera. Uh, and in that, we find Alteryx as a great partner for us because their mainstay is how do you help business? Uh, harness data, understand what's in the data, be able to drive that value out of that data. So I think we are extremely synergistic in how we are focusing on business and business opportunities. Together, we are bringing the, the differentiation and the firepower that exists across both the companies together. We are thinking about industry solutions, we are thinking about industry problems that can be solved with uh, data analytics and AI. Brand profitability is a great example of that, where we leverage Alteryx's innovation to be able to build the brand profitability as a solution on top. Same thing with revenue growth management. We have tremendous uh, footprint in pricing, uh, in customer intelligence, in marketing transformation, in supply chain transformation. These are big rocks, and this is where enterprises look to gain significant business value through data analytics and AI. And our partnership with Alteryx is helping us curate these industry solutions together and also engage in a, in a collaborative way where we can bring these innovations to our uh, common customers and our, our customers that, that we want to go to. Yeah, I, I think that to me that is, it's about outcomes, right? And when you start to look at it, it's, it's not just about building a workflow. The workflow has to work and there has to be an outcome. What are you seeing in, when you're working with Alteryx and with the customers about those workflows and being able to help them? I, we were talking about, I think it was uh, one of the customers that was on stage this morning was talking about 75 different workflows automated, and I think it was DoorDash or something like that, and you start to look at that and that had a crazy amount of hours saved. In, how do you see that working in that partnership with those customers and getting beyond just, hey, you know, it's a workflow to here's the outcome? Yeah, no, I think it turns out to be a very natural process for both Alteryx and Infosys uh, to be looking at 
how we can drive that end change and end value to, to our customers. Uh, if you look around and talk to our clients or to talk to teams in different enterprises, uh, there's no dearth of use cases, right? Almost everybody jumped into this bandwagon with the idea that you know we have all these use cases that we can take to. Uh, and we start asking those customers and those teams uh, that you're working on the use case is good for experimentation just to get started and it also gives a very quick time to value so it's, it's great, it's a good you know, um, uh, base to build on but then you need to have uh, a certain view of where do you want all these use cases to lead to uh, and then we start having conversations on how you can transcend from use cases to capabilities. Right. Right? Let me give you an example. Uh, many of our customers have worked on uh, customer attrition model, right? Basically, being able to predict which consumers and or customers are likely to attract, and what can I do if I can predict that, maybe I can do certain things in order to make sure that they stay with us as a customer. The question is, if you, if you do customer uh, you know, attrition model, you'll probably build that, and it stops there. Um, instead, if you thought about net promoter score, as a capability, NPS, on the higher end, you could use this for upsell and cross-sell, and on the lower end, you could predict attrition. And now you build a capability that just gives you a tool to be able to engage all customers, regardless of which part of the spectrum they lie on. And there's a huge uptick, right? The work that you do now for NPS can be so quickly leveraged across the entire life cycle of customers. So we're guiding our customers to move from use cases to capabilities, to process, to product services, right? including AI and generative AI in your products can make a game, you know, it can be a game changer as you start to compete in the marketplace with so many different AI powered offerings, you will be able to then differentiate that much more. So our work with Altrix is to be able to use that foundation of process mining and understanding how business processes are being run, how to infuse data and AI into that, but also scale that to these capabilities that can make a, a, a significant difference in the way in which the companies operate and serve their customers and uh, you know, engage with partners and so on, but also bring this innovation into the product services game. Uh, and that's where I think we'll, as consumers, we'll benefit a lot and uh, the companies gain a lot in terms of the loyalty and, and the experience that they can deliver. Yeah, and like you said, being able to reuse that and t talk to a bigger, a, bigger, a bigger theme, like NPS, I mean, it's everybody, you want to do better for your customers. I mean, that's, that's, that's key. Well, speaking, speaking of that, yeah. how do you then recommend customers communicate that? Because, I mean, there's so much more than just, hey, this is working, to, okay, now we need to get the message out. We need to make sure we've measured it and that people are getting excited about the real difference that we are making here. Absolutely, so you'll see a combination of grassroots innovation, which is where all the experimentation use cases are happening, but you'll also see the top-down messaging. Um, you know, unlike previous waves of uh, technology transformation, this one didn't need to be uh, sold to the CXO or the boards. Uh, they caught on to the idea of AI and generative AI, uh, you know, through all the things that we saw happening in the consumer AI side. The idea is, how do you use this to uh, create an objective, saying, here's where we want to go as a company, and align your business strategy with the AI strategy, and then translate that into blueprints, execution model, set a model of governance, not just data and AI governance, which is very important, but also executive governance, because this needs to be put on the guardrails of how you drive to that value that you want to get to, and then have all these initiatives kind of add up to be able to get to this. The underlying fabric has to be, in my view, on three uh, dimensions. One is what is your strategy? Second, how you're going to govern so that you stay on course to do this because things are going to change. There'll be challenges along the way. What works for one company does not work for you. You'll take some time to figure that out. But the third dimension has to be value. You want to make sure that your initiatives, the actions that you're taking, corrections you're making are value creative and that gets you to that value faster and which is where Infosys is helping many of our customers set up what we call AI value office. So we have the strategy and value office as one uh, element of how you drive this across enterprises. Many of our customers are global. So they have to bring stakeholders from different geographies, different divisions, all looking, you know, working together to be able to grow, to be able to drive efficiencies in their business, build connected ecosystems through which they can innovate on their products and services and experiences that they can deliver to their customers. It requires that kind of a fabric, and that's where the value office sets that fabric, 
where you are able to take steps that are value accretive, and if not, goes as a feedback loop so that you can feed that back into your strategy. So AI strategy is very different from conventional strategies that you've seen where you do three to six months of strategy and 18 months of execution. Here, strategy and execution are happening in quick iterations, and that's the way to uh, you know, create innovation at speed, but also look at how you're going to scale it using innovation at scale. And one continuous feedback loop, yeah. I love it. One continuous feedback loop. Sunil, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. As always, a really, really insightful conversation. Thank you for having me on your show, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. I stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise technology news, coverage, and analysis.